The most dangerous room in the house is the bathroom. A report released by the CDC in 2008 stated that 22 million Americans every year get injured right here in the bathroom. So here's my scientific evidence-based grooming routine to keep you safe and happy and healthy. Huge thanks to Timo for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get started. Whoop. Okay. First things first, we got a shower. And the last time I talked about advice surrounding showers, I got a lot of flack. Not everyone needs to shower every single day. Your whole video smell like hot dog water and wet penis. Here's the reality. Not everybody needs to shower every single day. And showering with extremely hot water is not great for your skin. It predisposes you to all sorts of rashes, irritations, it dries out your skin. So when we're talking showers, we're talking quick, less than five minutes, not incredibly hot, and not necessarily every day. Two thirds of those 22 million accidents that happen in the bathroom each year happen as a result of slip and falls. That's why it's so important that there's something for you to grab onto in your shower and that you have good grip on the floor. That could mean putting in a shower mat or just installing grip tape so that you have good traction. It's time to lather up with the soap bar. And a fun fact about your soap bar is that it does in fact have bacteria on it, even though soap is antibacterial. Pretty weird process, but the amount of bacteria found on your soap is pretty limited. There's not enough of it to cause a problem. And the second you start using it, the water runs through it, it cleans off the bacteria, no problem. Now, much like showering, you don't have to shampoo every day. This is of course, unless you have fine hair, live in a humid environment, or are sweating a lot. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine to go a few days without shampooing your head. When you do shampoo, make sure that you clean your scalp well, because part of washing your hair is also washing your scalp. One of the most common shampoo questions I get is about two-in-one products, where you have shampoo plus conditioner. Now, unless you're in a pinch, this is not advisable to be used daily. In order to have the conditioner actually stay on after you shampoo, you need the conditioner to be a special formulation to withstand some of that shampoo power, the degreasing power. And as a result, if you use that day in and day out, you can actually have a buildup of grease, weighing your hair down, making it look less than optimal. We've talked about cleaning hair, but now let's talk about getting rid of hair. Now, I'm not usually one to shave, but I will point out that most people, when they do shave, they shave incorrectly. When you do so, you can create nicks in your skin, irritation, acne, folliculitis, which is an infected hair follicle. Literally just learning proper shaving technique by following these simple steps will go a long way in decreasing shaving irritation. And because I don't shave and I still wanna maintain a kept appearance, I do trim my facial hair. When I do the trimming, I usually clean up my beard all the way to the edge of my jawline, just for a little bit of accentuation. Now let's talk nose hair. It's unsightly, people wanna get rid of it. There's videos on TikTok of people ripping out their nose hairs using waxes, people plucking it, and that's not really medically ideal because nose hair is there to serve a purpose. It actually acts as a filtering system for your nose. So instead of ripping it out either by plucking or waxing, use a nose hair trimmer to gently trim it so that you don't see it on the outside of your nose. Moving on to armpit hair. Most people will make their choice on whether or not they wanna have armpit hair based on aesthetics, the way that it looks. For me, the way that I like to think about it is it's there to serve a purpose. Part of that purpose is to decrease friction, especially if you're exercising often. If you're moving your arms, you're swinging them by your sides, having the armpit hair will actually decrease some of that chafing and irritation that can come as a result of jogging. However, there are certain instances where individuals can struggle with their BO or body odor. And in those instances, getting rid of the armpit hair could be beneficial and actually cut down on that smell. Pubic hair, Simple solution on this one, trimming is the way to go. We've seen all sorts of medical research, even the ones that I talked about in this video here, about the fact that when you shave, you create openings in skin, and that's a simple way to transmit an STI. Also, we just said it for armpits, friction reduction is important, especially in the nether region. 
And when you are gonna be trimming your hair, use different trimmers for the right task. For example, for my face, I have this wall facial hair trimmer. So it has sharper edges, it's a little bit cleaner, can get closer to the skin. But then when you're doing your pubic area, you're doing your chest hair, use one that has a skin safety blade like this. Otherwise, you could get really bad cuts and uh, that will make it a lot more tolerable and safe. I'm someone who tends to sweat a lot. So let's talk about how to stop sweating or at least for the sweat to be not as smelly. We have two options when it comes to that, antiperspirant and deodorant. The difference between the two is quite simple. Antiperspirant blocks pores, preventing you from sweating, and deodorant actually just kills the bacteria in your armpits and applies a fresh scent so that your sweat doesn't smell. I like to say that there's two types of sweat. You have thermoregulation sweat, where you're trying to cool your body down, and then there's stress sweat, which comes from your apocrine glands. There's more protein, more oil in this type of sweat, so when bacteria begin to consume it, they release a smell that is not incredibly pleasant. And if you happen to be one of those individuals like myself who has hyperhidrosis, sweats intensely, profusely, there's a couple of strategies. One, you can get a clinical strength antiperspirant that ideally you put on the day before, the night before, when your body's at its coolest so that it does the most effective job at plugging your pores. Another option, kicking into high gear and getting an injection of Botox directly into your axillary or armpit sweat glands. That will shut them down, therefore decreasing sweating. Hair drying is one of the most important parts of a proper grooming routine because you wanna do it smart so that you're not damaging your hair. For me, something I do before styling my hair is putting in a light moisturizing cream and thickening spray. We've actually seen through science that when your hair is wet, it's the most susceptible to being damaged. Keeping your scalp damp for a long time can increase the growth of fungus or bacteria. I really recommend towel drying first and then using a moderate heat setting on a blow dryer in order to get it dry, but making sure you're doing it the right way, at least six inches apart away from your hair, not direct heat. I recently got the Tymo Air Hype Dryer and I really like it because of its incredibly powerful motor. More power in the motor means less drying time less exposure to heat, less damage to my hair. It's kind of a win-win across the board. It can even penetrate thick hair to dry your scalp and hair quickly. It's powerful enough to dry a full head of long hair in 30 minutes, but my hair isn't that long, so I'm usually done in under five. Use a moderate heat setting to dry hair gently as to never burn your scalp or fry your hair. Reminder that when you use a traditional dryer, they can heat up while you're using them, which bakes your hair. And hair breakage is most commonly caused by heat damage. The Tymo feels incredibly high end. You have a screen here that pops up, the fan speed, the temperature setting. Uh, it's very easy to turn on the cool setting. I really like the giant features in the Tymo, uh, like the negative ion built-in system, which actually neutralizes the positive charges in wet hair, therefore decreasing frizz. An underrated feature of the Tymo is the fact that it's incredibly quiet at only 69 decibels. Uh, that's a lot better than some of the leading competitors that I've used in the past. I've said time and time again, Again, the less noise you have at high decibels near your ear, the better. Given the quality, the tech, the fact that this works on so many different hair types, it's a great gift for just about anybody. So click the link in the description. You're gonna get a discount. Highly, highly recommend the Tymo Air Hype Blow Dryer. Once my hair is dry, I like to use an Oribe molding paste in order to get it styled. I think this product looks semi-matte, more natural, and it washes out quite easily as well. You don't have any leftover gunk after the shower. Nails are the window to your health. I can't tell you how many times I examine my patient's nails to find a serious health condition going on. Whether it's certain things that point to an autoimmune condition like psoriatic nails, or perhaps a black line on the nails that signifies a melanoma. That's a skin cancer that develops under the nail. It's really important to not only take good care of your nails, but also to speak with your doctor if something happens that's unusual for your nail. Uh, part of my grooming routine is making sure my nails are cut short. It's ideal to do this after the shower 
shower because your nails are softer then, it's easier to cut them. Fun fact, toenails do grow slower than fingernails, so you can get away with cutting them less often. There are instances, especially if you wear tight-fitting footwear, that you can get an ingrown toenail. Folks do try and make incisions in their skin and their nail to try and treat this. If you're unsure, instead of doing damage, see your doctor, because what we actually do is cut out that part of the nail after numbing the toe, and then we actually destroy the base of the nail where the nail matrix is in order to prevent that part of the nail from regrowing back and causing another problem. Can't have a grooming routine without talking about dental health. And dental health is a part of health. It starts by brushing your teeth. You should be doing this ideally twice a day because you wanna get rid of plaque. Plaque buildup leads to gingivitis, gum disease, cavities, oral health problems that you simply do not want, and brushing your teeth is a simple way to combat that. When it comes to flossing, there's a little bit of controversy to be had because people say that there is no long-term data saying that flossing is actually beneficial. But while there is no long-term randomized control data, there are really Really good quality short-term data that support flossing and also there's a ton of anecdotal good quality evidence across the globe that say flossing is an important part of health. When it comes to mouthwash it's a common question I get and unless it's specifically recommended for you by a dentist by a doctor for some specific medical condition I usually tell most people to avoid mouthwash because they usually use one that has a lot of alcohol in it that aims to kill all bacteria in the mouth. But remember, part of your microbiome is probiotic, meaning it's good bacteria and you don't want to kill it. If you brush your teeth and you floss, you should have a healthy smelling mouth. If you don't, then you should be speaking to your doctor about other causes that can cause bad breath or halitosis, like acid reflux. That's a surprising one most people don't know about. It's probably pretty shocking to you that I even have these in my home, but Q-tips have a wide variety of uses that I actually enjoy. The place where I would tell you not to put these is inside your ear. If you wanna use a Q-tip to clean your ear, clean the outside of the ear only. So many of my patients think that earwax means a dirty ear, but that's not true. In fact, if you remove all your earwax from your ear, you dry out the canal faster. By scratching inside the ear, you make it more prone to bacterial infections, fungal infections. And if you go far enough with a Q-tip, you could actually damage your eardrum or tympanic membrane. Also, if you are gonna be using this anywhere around your ear, make sure you're not doing it near a door. When it comes to skincare, I like to keep things as simple as possible. And the advice here really needs to be individualized. For my skin that's perpetually dry, I like to use a moisturizing product that's good quality. I like this Bioderma product. If I'm applying a moisturizer and I know I'm gonna be spending time outside, I like to get one with SPF in it. That also means getting a good quality lip balm as well, especially if you're a mouth breather because your nose is a little stuffy at night. Making sure your lips aren't dry goes a long, long way to prevent chapping. Currently, I have a situation where I have a a little rosacea around my eye. So for that, I'm using metronidazole, which uniquely is an antibiotic. Not that this is an infectious process or that this helps because of its antibiotic properties. The idea is that it has some anti-inflammatory properties, but I've been using it and so far it's been doing a decent job. Hopefully this rosacea will go. I don't usually use a cleansing product unless I've just done television or the news where they put on foundation and makeup on my face against my will. And when they do, I wanna make sure that I clean that off properly, so I do use a cleansing product at that time. But in general, I don't think it's mandatory to every day to cleanse your face. You've seen my grooming routine, but have you seen Bear's grooming routine? Click here to check it out. And as always, stay happy and healthy.